In this lesson, we'll go over how to grasp the cricothyroid complex with the laryngeal handshake and the steps for the procedure. Before we begin, it's important to understand the circumstances that led you to the brink of cutting this patient's neck. Most likely, you just sedated and paralyzed your patient and tried to intubate them and were not successful. You are now having trouble oxygenating your patient with a bag valve mask and other rescue equipment like a laryngeal mask airway. So now you're standing in front of a cyanotic, paralyzed patient and you've asked for a number 10 scalpel, a bougie, and a 6 0 endotracheal tube. If you used succinylcholine for paralysis, your patient is about to start moving and doing the crike will be very challenging. So be prepared to give more succinylcholine. If you used rocuronium, your patient will remain paralyzed and this will make the crike much easier. The first step is to grasp the entire cricothyroid complex with what's called the laryngeal handshake. If you're right-handed, stand on the right side of the patient next to their neck. If you're left-handed, stand on their left side. Use your non-dominant hand to grasp the lower part of the thyroid cartilage firmly between your thumb and middle fingers. At the same time, push the skin between your fingers down so that the next skin is taut and easier to cut. You should not let go of this position until your blade has entered the airway. Your index finger can now feel the landmarks and point out the area to make your incision using your dominant hand. Now let's go over the two incisions you'll need to make. With your dominant hand using the number 10 scalpel, make a vertical midline incision from the middle of the thyroid cartilage to the top of the cricoid cartilage. Your cut needs to be deep past the fat. This is when the bleeding starts and expect to get sprays of arterial blood on your shirt or your face. But do not let go of the laryngeal handshake. With your non-dominant index finger, feel past the fat and feel if your landmarks are correct. At this point, you should be able to feel the cricothyroid membrane between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. You may need to extend your incision up or down depending on your landmarks and what you feel. Now, let's go over the second incision. It's now time to cut the cricothyroid membrane and get into the airway. If your patient is not paralyzed in this step, the blood dripping into their airway will make them cough, and there will be a spray of blood coming at you. So again, ideally you used rocuronium and you're wearing a face shield. Stab your number 10 blade past the cricothyroid membrane. Be very careful here. If you push your scalpel too far, you'll be cutting the back of the trachea. So be gentle and don't stab too deep. Now it's time to use the wide number 10 blade like a shoehorn. You can let go of the laryngeal handshake and switch hands, but the tip of your scalpel still remains inside the trachea and doesn't move. Using the scalpel like a shoehorn, you can now pull the skin and fat towards the head to make room for the bougie that's been preloaded with a pre-cut 6-OET tube. Put the preloaded bougie through the hole you've just made into the trachea towards the lungs and then feed the ET tube over it into the airway. Depending on the size of the cricothyroid space, you may need to push a little bit harder than you think to make room for the tube. As soon as the balloon of the tube is in the trachea, you can stop and inflate the cuff. Remember, you're already below the vocal cords. You now have direct access to the patient's airway and can bag your patient. Be sure to hold on to the tube until it's secured. You can do this the same way that you secure an endotracheal tube. You will also need to hold some pressure on any bleeding vessels that are still pumping blood. Confirmation of proper placement is the same as a regular endotracheal intubation. Listen for breath sounds of bilateral axilla. Use the end tidal CO2 detector and get a chest x-ray. Congratulations, you just performed a successful cricothyrotomy and saved your patient's life. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video.
So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.